The city offers a glorious kaleidoscope of culture and colors, history and heritage. And now some remarkable urban wonders are being added on to the capital's list of majestic monuments and minarets, forts and shrines and leisure destinations. The city's new urban wonders seem to represent two different extremes. On one side are swanky metro railways, bus rapid transit network and magnificent flyovers and roads that dominate the city's landscape. On the other side are equally important trunk infrastructure like water filter plants and sewerage and drainage system which are undergoing massive transformation thanks to some major investments and ideas. Ignoring this critical piece of trunk infrastructure can sink reputation of any city aspiring to be a world class. After decades of slumber, Delhi is finally waking up to the need for overhauling the British era infrastructure and creating new capacities for the 17 million people calling the city their home. Hello and welcome to our special series, Cities of the Future. I'm Mini Menon. You know, every big city in India has a problem of plenty of vehicles on the roads and plenty of unauthorized hutments and shanty towns which have cropped up, putting pressure on the resources. The national capital, New Delhi, is also one such city, but it has found novel ways to deal with the problems and ensure sustainable growth. In part two of our series on New Delhi, take a look at what it has done. The capital city that the British envisioned in 1911 was meant only for 70,000 people. But today, after 100 years, the city is adding four times this population every year. This space of growth presents new challenges to the urban planners and civic authorities. For instance, for public transportation and urban mobility, they must plan big because this booming city owns more vehicles than all of Mumbai, Kolkata and Chennai combined. The number of vehicles, the number of cars which are there in Delhi are more than if you take Bombay, Delhi, uh, Bombay, Calcutta, Madras, Bangalore together. Delhi has more cars than that. Where do we park with all those cars? So there is a big problem, massive problem of parking. For that, we are uh, developing and thinking of multi-level parkings. So there are quite a lot of multi-level parkings which we are constructing and automated parkings. But the problem will still remain in colonies. In colonies, when all these cars go back home, where do these cars stand? And I feel that if the third world war is going to be on water, the civil war in uh, big metropolitan cities will be on parking areas. In every colony you see, wherever a car is parked in the morning, there are a lot of uh, conflicts which go on with it in the residence. Rajni Abbey's Municipal Corporation of Delhi or MCD serves almost 97% of Delhi while the remaining city is looked after by the NDMC and the Cantonment Board. The MCD manages over 225 vehicle parkings, having added half a dozen parkings in the past few months and is building many more. To facilitate vehicular transport, the MCD is also planning to raise a loan of 650 crore rupees to make concrete roads across the city. The need for more roads and the pressure on parking space are clear indications of a shrinking space for the city's over 6 million vehicles. This is getting worse with over 1,000 vehicles getting registered every day. As your per capita income grows, people are going to move towards uh, their personal vehicles. But if you look at some good uh, advanced cities where you know, public transport and urban planning has, been, has evolved, 
their people use their personal vehicles only for leisure. So if they need to go to a party or to drive out on the weekend, but for work, they find it easier to commute using public transport or to cycle to work if it is close by or walk to work. People going to offices will use less of personal vehicles only when there is a reliable and comfortable mode of public transport, something that Delhi never had. But this has changed now with the Delhi Metro Railway completing its second phase and expanding its network to 190 kilometers across seven corridors. Metro is evolving also into a metro come suburban rail. So it brings people from suburbs into the city or takes people from the city to the suburbs as it is doing in Gurgaon or in Faridabad or Ghaziabad, Noida, etc. The Delhi Metro is indeed a shining icon of India's emergence as an economic power, a spectacular feat of engineering and imagination. The success of the Delhi Metro owes a lot to the inspiration and drive of this great visionary. Dr. E. Sridharan took over the project in late 1997 and gave not only the citizens of Delhi but the entire country a reason to feel proud. His metro has redefined how a government-run organization or a corporation should execute a project of this sophistication and complexity in a record time. And it continues to win laurels and kudos from all over the world. The project is a prayer answered for 50% of Delhi that doesn't own vehicles and also a boon for the two-wheeler and car-owning office-goers who can now choose the safe, affordable and air-conditioned comfort of the metro over endless traffic jams on the roads. The passengers are now thronging to the Delhi metro stations and the traffic is increasing with every kilometre and station getting added. The network is already carrying 1.7 to 2 million passengers every day. On its present fleet of 200 trains running across 144 stations in seven different corridors. Nine years ago in 2002, on a network of 8 kilometers, it could carry just 30,000 people every day. The Delhi Metro is expecting traffic of about 4 million passengers once the third phase expands the network to over 300 kilometers. To serve more and more passengers, it has to add not only more kilometers of tracks but also coaches and frequency of trips. For the third phase, it is designing a signal system that will allow the trains to run every 110 seconds. Already, the frequency of trains has been increased to two and a half minutes from the initial days of four to six minutes. The Delhi Metro is also looking to increase the number of coaches to eight in some of its trains. Already, it has converted half of its fleet into six coach trains, up from four coaches. This has resulted in serving more people as a typical coach can carry around 300 to 350 passengers. The third phase will add another 117 kilometers with investments worth 35,000 crore rupees or 7.8 billion dollars. That is more than the combined investments for both the Phase 1 and 2. The Delhi Metro is envisaged to be a 415km network by the end of its last fourth phase, which will comprehensively integrate the national capital region. With such a big network, the Metro will become the world's second largest, ahead of London's 402km network and next only to Shanghai's 425 kilometers. The Metro's real feat lies in its viability and profitability. Out of the world's 140 Metro railway networks, only five make profits. And the Delhi Metro belongs to this elite group of profit-making metros. In fact, the Delhi Metro has been showing operating profit from day one. Today, its operating ratio is at 0.52. This means to earn 100 rupees, it spends only 52 rupees. That is a great achievement, considering that this sector is regarded as an investment in the public cause with little hope of profits. The Delhi Metro holds lessons for other Indian cities embarking on the metro rail journey and even for the world's other metro systems. It has been consistently crashing timelines and setting new benchmarks. 
Phase 1 was planned to be a 65km network in 10 years, but it got completed in just 7 years and 9 months by December 2005. Phase 2 was conceived as a 54km network, but this target was revised upwards to 125 kilometers to include many new routes as a build-up to the Commonwealth Games. Even this tough target was achieved against all odds within four and a half years by October 2010. One huge advantage of consistently beating deadlines and conquering challenges that the urban landscape throws up has been tremendous savings on the project cost. This has proved to be extremely critical in keeping the costs within the budgeted expenditure. A profitable entity is in the interest of all, especially the lenders who trust the cities and the Delhi Metro's growth story. The Japan International Cooperation Agency or GICA is once again contributing soft loan. And this is likely to be about 40% of the estimated cost for the third phase. But the returns that a transport mode like Metro generates in terms of social equity and environment are simply priceless. According to a study conducted by the Central Road Research Institute or CRRI, the Delhi Metro's projected benefits for the year 2011 are worth $1.1 billion or 4,900 crore rupees. Consider key findings. The study shows that there are fuel savings for people travelling by metros as well as for those using personal vehicles because the metro has helped in the decongestion of the roads. It also helps prevent emissions of harmful gases and fatal accidents by shifting private commuters to the safer mode. But one metro system may not be enough for the city of Delhi size. The Delhi government is putting in place a major revamp of public transport system led by buses and BRTS. More on the urban mobility and clean Yamuna mission after the break. Not many cities can boast of a road space area of 21% that the capital city commands. This advantage is now also a huge constraint because the city doesn't have much scope to expand the roads. The number of vehicles are increasing, so consequently you have to use that road space more efficiently and it requires really a paradigm shift. So till now we have been planning to move more vehicles on roads versus moving more people on roads. So we have to first focus on moving more people on roads. So what we have to really look at is the per unit or number of people carried per vehicle. So those vehicles which carry more people quickly is better, right? So buses carry more people, metros carry more people. Second is that even for cars or other uh, private uh, vehicles, you need to give them information. You need to tell them if there is congestion so that they can take alternative routes. There are various other parallel roads which are, may not be full. So you can do load balancing. People can also time, so a person who is on the margin for whom moving at 9 o'clock may not be that important, could move at 8.30 in the morning and beat the rush, right? Furthermore, you may need to efficiently signal. So if you efficiently signal, you, you know, increase the throughput or the number of vehicles which cross a particular junction by 10 to 20 percent. So you need to use, sweat your assets more. Again, the buses. If you give them a dedicated lane, you can do with much lesser number of buses because they move quicker and the turnaround time is quicker. So the same bus, on the BRT we have noticed that if there was a requirement say of 100 buses, we can do with 90, 92 buses because at least on that corridor the buses move much quicker. The Delhi government is readying for a massive revamp of the public transport system. SN Sahai's Delhi Integrated Multimodal Transit System, which is a 50-50 joint venture between the Delhi government and IDFC, seeks to create an environment where the majority of trips take place by public transport in preference to personal vehicles. This, he believes, will happen only when the passenger trusts the bus network to be reliable and punctual. If you're a bus, uh, you know, a, person, a commuter, you want a reliable bus service. So when I go to the bus stand, I should be certain that in the next five or seven minutes, I ought to get a bus. This is what the cluster scheme guarantees. 
as part of our you know uh, outreach program we are also uh, transport department is also going to put passenger information system on uh, 500 uh, bus stands to begin with later many more so that if you're there you know in how much time a bus will come regularity of bus service is critical for to get people onto buses you can also you'll be also able to check through sms and internet your bus where your bus is so if you have advanced information that waiting anxiety goes and you know that it's a regular bus service you can plan your trip the government is using signaling technology and now a dedicated control room to ensure that the private owned public buses under its new cluster scheme don't repeat the mischief and bad practices of the erstwhile blue line buses that have been removed from the roads at the new control room these cluster buses are also observed for rash driving exceeding speed limits not stopping at the bus stops or stopping for long duration at any bus stops to fill the buses Delhi government is looking to double the network of public buses to over 11,000 by 2014. Delhi's state-run bus company DTC operates about 5,400 buses, so the incremental expansion will be driven by its cluster scheme, under which it allows private operators to manage the buses for the public by putting their operations under the strict scrutiny of its control room. Already, over 100 cluster buses are carrying about 1 lakh passengers a day, while DTC buses carry 2.8 million passengers every day. The government wants to cover 650 routes across Delhi through 17 clusters. Presently, only one cluster is operating, while bid for four clusters have been received and awarded. SN Sahai explains that the city will have a fleet of about 1,000 cluster buses by March 2012 and this will grow further to 6,000 buses by 2014. But is there enough space on the roads for so many buses in the city? It's pretty generously provided as far as roads are concerned. So if you're able to give a lane to buses on each side, you will get enough space for cars to move. If you don't have so many buses, you will have complete gridlock in the system. So you need metro, you need good bus service. You can't service the city with just metro. It's far too expensive. It is fixed. It's not that flexible. Once you've laid a line, it can't move here and there. Buses are far more flexible. So you, you need a whole network, metro, buses, paratransit, and then only can you solve congestion. The Delhi government has also turned its attention to the Bus Rapid Transit Network or BRT, which is today a dedicated bus corridor of 14.5 kilometers. It has plans to build 300 kilometers of BRT corridor across the city, and a feasibility study for 220 kilometer network is already underway. Most importantly, the government is looking to offer a seamless mobility between all future BRT bus stations and the Delhi Metro. If you notice in the BRT corridor, a couple of these bus stands have been made now next to the metro station. So the future BRTs and metro stations, they are going to, there'll be one single interchange point, You're going to have common mobility tickets so that with one card you can move between metro and buses, right? Then there is a whole, uh, I, uh, this thing that close to all these um, in, uh, multimodal or intermodal change points, that means stations or BRT bus stands or normal bus stand, you have some space where you can park uh, cycles or auto rickshaws or rickshaws. As I said, this whole network has to be there and uh, that's being planned. Uh, the smart card, smart card should roll out in a year and a half. You know, we have already found the technology partner that should be possible. Metro smart cards are already there. So we need to just uh, work on a common platform and that has to evolve. Um, all the future uh, BRT corridors, the designing has been done such that there is a seamless interchange. Hopefully, such initiatives will redefine the urban mobility and public transport in Delhi and win more and more car drivers away from the roads, thereby allowing more people to travel via roads.
but the world class delhi metro and public bus network also needs to be matched by world class infrastructure for sewerage and sanitation more on that and clean yamuna mission after the break few hours of showers are enough to sink the reputation of national capital region as a world class destination scenes of water logging and traffic jams on account of the rains make you realize that the region is extremely vulnerable just like any other city in the country while the attention remained riveted on the large visible projects as a build up to the commonwealth games Delhi's decades old drainage sanitation and sewerage system and the Yamuna river continued to bear the brunt of this indifference Delhi Jal Board the utility run by the government of Delhi is hoping that it is able to make some difference this time Delhi presently not more than 55% uh, area is sewered now that's itself uh, it makes very clear that around 45% area and population is not sewered so because unauthorized colonies it's only for last 3 years the courts have allowed delhi government to go for uh, sewerage uh, facilities in these colonies so now a master plan has been developed and whatever sewerage is being generated so we have two prong strategy that wherever we have a sewer system that is being strengthened and those areas where there is no sewer system and all the sewerage finally comes into the drains so we have now started a scheme which has been approved by government of india the work will start from this month only september which is known as interceptor sewer project delhi sewerage treatment strategy will be boosted by an investment of 2000 crore rupees in the interceptor project funded by the jnn urm and the delhi government The interceptor is designed to be a 60 km underground sewerage system laid through a unique trenchless and tunneling technology where you won't see anybody digging. It will capture all the sewerage from all the drains in Delhi which finally gets accumulated in three drains main drains and from there we'll take it to the STPs. So once the sewage treatment plants receive on this discharge from all the drains and then we treat it and put back in yamuna so we hope to improve the levels water quality levels in yamuna and from the present high level of bod of 40 uh, bod uh, levels we want to bring it down to less than 15 so that is the target so once we do that thereafter Uh, with natural aeration downstream delhi yamuna will be much more cleaner may not be in delhi itself but downstream delhi it will be cleaner the interceptor project is likely to be completed in 4 years by 2015 this will be backed by another ambitious project wherein the board will more than double its sewer network from 7000 kilometers to 15000 kilometers to provide sewerage to all homes in delhi ramesh negi's delhi jal board is now pinning its hopes on a budget of 17000 crore rupees for its sewerage operations over the next 5 years hopefully these initiatives and investments by the central and state governments and also assistance by japan's jaica under yamuna action plan will bring the yamuna river back in the lives of the dilli walas well let's hope new delhi follows up on these ideas and programs and becomes one of the most livable capitals of the world next week in the last of our series on the cities of the future we bring you the best practices the crime issues that need to be addressed and the game plan for the biggest cities across the country thank you so much for joining us goodbye